to create a global city and surpass its weight on the world stage. Sri Lanka reclaimed two square kilometers of land from the Indian Ocean. This is how Colombo is going to become one of South Asia's most formidable new centers. Dubai is considered the most luxurious city in the world. With oil money, the Arabs have successfully transformed Dubai from a desert to a city with the tallest skyscraper in the world. The Burj Khalifa stands proudly in Dubai as the clearest proof that the city is pure luxury. Now China wants to change all that. The Chinese government intends to build a new Dubai or a luxury city like Dubai and they have chosen Sri Lanka as their destination. At the moment, the area called Port City is just a line in wasteland going into the ocean. But when all is said and done, the city will have 65 million cubic meters of sand. The goal is to make Port City a place of glass skyscrapers, a vibrant financial district hotels, a theme park and everything else. Every year. Approximately 200,000 Sri Lankans, many of whom are highly skilled, leave the country in search of better employment opportunities. Since the conclusion of the civil war in 2009, Sri Lanka has been determined to revitalize its capital and attract both talent and employment opportunities. The aim is to sustain remarkable economic growth and gain global recognition for Colombo, strategically positioned between the major centers of Dubai and Singapore. Now aside from belly rubs, having a whiter smile is what all dogs and people crave the most. I didn't always have a white smile. In fact, Veda wouldn't talk to me for the longest time because she didn't like my teeth. But I made a vow to her that I would whiten my smile. Primal Life Organics helped me do it. Now my relationship with my dog is pretty good. The Primal Life Organics teeth whitening system is the only teeth whitening system on the planet that I use for two reasons. One, it's super effective at whitening my smile. And two, it's safe and all natural. What do I mean by that? It doesn't use any harmful chemicals or peroxides that will damage my teeth or damage my health. Instead, it uses an LED light mouthpiece to whiten your smile along with a food grade tooth whitening gel. It even has a red light setting to reduce inflammation and soothe your gums. And it has a loud noise to irritate your dog. I'm sincerely a fan of the Primal Life Organics teeth whitening system. I use it and I love it because it meets my health standards and it works to effectively whiten my teeth. I think you'll love it too. If you want a whiter smile without the worry of harming your teeth or degenerating your health, check out Primal Life Organics teeth whitening. Additionally, its proximity to New Delhi, Kuala Lumpur, and Bangkok further enhances Colombo's potential within its geographic context. However, due to its coastal location, the expansion of Colombo has traditionally been limited to its outskirts, away from the existing economic and cultural center. Nevertheless, a solution has been found to overcome this challenge and boost interconnectivity within the city. The port city of Colombo has undertaken an ambitious project to reclaim two square kilometers of land from the sea. This expansion will result in a vast new area encompassing commercial, residential, and public spaces, which are expected to generate around 80,000 new jobs. This groundbreaking endeavor, financed and co-developed by the Chinese and the local government, stands as the largest private sector development in Sri Lankan history. By reclaiming land and creating an expansive urban space, Colombo is poised to become an even more dynamic and prosperous hub. This visionary project not only addresses the limitations posed by the city's coastal location but also paves the way for significant economic growth, employment opportunities, and the transformation of Colombo into a globally recognized center. The collaboration between Chinese and local stakeholders underscores the commitment to driving progress and elevating Sri Lanka's standing on the world stage. The Port City project encompasses five distinct areas, namely the Financial District, Central Park Island, Living Marina, and the International Island, spanning a total of 269 hectares. Out of this, 173 hectares have been designated as market lands. Chinese dredgers and excavators have been tirelessly working along Colombo's renowned waterfront, evoking a range of emotions among the countless passers-by who frequent the area. Despite encountering delays and disagreements, they have persevered in reclaiming seawater, laying the groundwork for a new financial center that will emerge from the Indian Ocean, extending to the shores of Sri Lanka's bustling trading capital.
this newly developed area will possess its own economic and commercial regulations, heightening its appeal to global multinational corporations. Additionally, its strategic positioning near key sea lanes in the Indian Ocean will further enhance its attractiveness. The integration of the five areas within Port City will give rise to a cohesive urban environment spanning over 5 million square meters. It will accommodate approximately 80,000 residents and provide a daily commute for around 250,000 individuals. The master plan for this district envisions an eco-friendly and green metropolis, characterized by ample open spaces, waterways, and public areas. The layout will be designed to encourage walking and cycling, minimizing reliance on heavy automobile traffic. Buildings of varying heights will be thoughtfully arranged, with taller towers situated closer to the mainland. As one approaches the waterfront, the size of buildings will gradually decrease, creating a harmonious and aesthetically pleasing transition. Through meticulous planning and careful execution, the Port City Project aims to create a sustainable and vibrant urban landscape that not only fosters economic growth but also prioritizes environmental consciousness and livability for its residents and visitors. Undoubtedly, the creation of an entirely new district in the ocean is a complex undertaking, and the process of land reclamation for the Port City Project commenced in 2014. Initially, approximately 3 million cubic meters of quarry material, sourced from within a 50-kilometer radius of the site, were used along with over 40,000 precast concrete tetrapods to construct a massive breakwater. This imposing 20-meter high and 3.2-kilometer long barricade was erected to safeguard the new area against the unpredictable monsoon climate. During construction, the unfinished structure faced a test of its resilience in November 2017 when a cyclone struck, causing damage to certain sections. However, with the installation of necessary measures, the reclamation work proceeded, ultimately utilizing 65 million cubic meters of materials extracted from the sea to create the vast expanse on which the port city of Colombo now stands. The reclamation phase reached completion in 2019, and in December of the same year, the land was officially declared as part of Sri Lanka. Nevertheless, the project has not been without controversy. Environmental groups have voiced concerns regarding the impact of the undertaking on the local environment. In 2015, the Prime Minister of Sri Lanka even suspended the entire project due to fears of coastal damage. Jude Neil Fernando, a fisherman and trade unionist from Gumbo, north of Colombo, highlighted how sand excavations along the coast were detrimental to aquatic life and the livelihoods of approximately 8,000 people dependent on fishing. The destruction of habitat for various species and the removal of corals have disrupted the ecological balance in the area. It's important to note that the fishing industry involves not just fishermen but also many others engaged in supporting activities, and their livelihoods have also been affected. The Center for Environmental Justice has argued that the construction of a new city requires more natural resources than Sri Lanka can provide. Experts have raised concerns that the sand requirements alone would quickly surpass 100 million cubic meters, endangering the fragile marine habitat and the livelihoods of the 15,000 fishermen operating in the mining zone. The center estimated the cost of the sand at $3.2 billion, surpassing the $1.4 billion invested in constructing the city. These controversies highlight the need for careful consideration of environmental impacts and the importance of sustainable development practices. Balancing economic growth with environmental preservation remains a crucial aspect of large-scale projects like the Port City, ensuring that the long-term well-being of local ecosystems and communities is safeguarded. The concerns raised by the environmental group regarding the increased car trips and resulting air pollution in the already polluted city of Colombo, surpassing World Health Organization standards, are valid and should be addressed. It is crucial to prioritize sustainable transportation solutions and mitigate the potential negative environmental impacts of the increased traffic in the new financial district. The resumption of the project after almost a year of environmental impact assessment demonstrates the importance of taking environmental considerations into account. However, concerns have also been raised regarding the extent of Chinese involvement in the port city of Colombo. As part of China's One Belt One Road initiative, the project aims to enhance connectivity between China, the Middle East, Europe, and Africa. While the port city could provide a new route for China to access the Indian subcontinent and its rapidly growing markets, there is apprehension about potential negative outcomes similar to previous deals between the two countries. Examples such as the Hambantota port, which faced severe losses and was subsequently leased to China for 99 years, and the Bala Rajapaksa International Airport, which remains largely underutilized despite significant financing from China, raise concerns about the long-term implications and financial viability of such projects. 
Despite these challenges, the developers of the Port City project are keen on ensuring its success. With the completion of land reclamation in 2019, construction is progressing rapidly. The international financial city of Colombo and the marina are already under construction, and the first building in the new district is scheduled to open this year. The government of Colombo plans to launch a joint marketing campaign to attract outside investors to the port city. While Sri Lanka has experienced disappointing developments in recent years, the completion of the Port City project holds the potential to attract new capital and bring significant economic benefits to the country. However, the success of the project will depend on effective management and addressing the concerns raised by environmental groups and other stakeholders. In conclusion, the Port City of Sri Lanka presents both opportunities and challenges. It is crucial to strike a balance between economic development and sustainable practices, ensuring that the project's benefits are maximized while minimizing negative impacts. Continued monitoring, responsible management, and stakeholder engagement will be vital for the long-term success and sustainability of the new port city. We would be interested to know your opinion. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like it and subscribe to the Top Visionary channel. Also watch our previous videos. Goodbye.